already. Let's see if we can do the thing. Hi, I'm Chris Merwindus, and hey, you can do this. Because this is Air Windows Baxendall 2. I've got an update for you. I don't really have anything else at the moment. Um, People who've been following me know that these are kind of difficult times for me. I'm doing my best with it all, but I do have your plugin. And the plugin is an update on Vaxendall. And I will show you the difference between those now. As you can see, I've got this up and running in a different program than usual. This is a Twisted Wave for Choi use for uh, two track editing. And I've got them in an effect stack so that I can throw a clip only on there as well. And I'm using the VST versions because the VST versions will let me run a double precision bus, which I like. So I always use these, although the AU versions will let you go to zero or click on this part to set things manually. But I prefer the sound of the VSTs that will do a double precision bus throughout. And so we're going to use that. Now, what's Baxendall? Baxendall is a simple sort of treble bass plugin that's made to do a sort of slant effect. It will give you gentle or extreme tonal coloration, and it's not a sort of fancy parametric with a lot of narrow bands and stuff going on. Instead, it's sort of broad sweeping strokes. And your original Baxendall sounds something like this. Can roll it right off, boost it up a lot, and of course we can also do stuff with bass as well. If you pull both of those things back, you get a certain amount of mid rangey effect, and if you boost them both, you get a mid suck out effect that is a lot stronger than cutting both. Now there are a couple of things about Baxendall. One of them is that it has a sort of analog modeling kind of thing where it includes a certain amount of clipping. And back in the day, I was not doing my ultrasonic filtering on the clipping. So we might be able to hear on this, we might be able to hear a certain amount of artificiality with the highs in that. Baxendall 2, on the other hand, is a simplified version. It's going to give you more of a range of adjustment. I'm going all the way to 24 dB. And it is also missing that uh, clipping stage. It's cleaner. So what we have, if we go to a comparable setting, I'm just trying to set these the same. There we go. And we have that crazy boost. And we go from Baxendall, and that has some distortion in it, too. It's a very simple, similar sound, but it has a cleaner effect to it. And you will also notice that in the bass. Let's take these and return them to zero, or as close to zero as I can get. Oh, look, trouble did actually go literally to zero. And what we can do with the bass of this is we have a pretty substantial bass boost in there, but you'll notice that it's peaking at 0 0.4 even without clip only. Actually, no, it's, clip, it's definitely going to 0 0.4 only with clip only, but 
The difference between that and Baxendall 2 is apparent. Here's our original one. And this is the one that you've already had available. But if we switch over to the other one, we have just a little more clarity and guts to the sound. There's more space and size to it because you don't always want to put on analog modeling if you don't need it. Now the reason I did this in its simplified form, because this one doesn't have an output control built into it, you can always add something like uh, purest gain or whatever. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm hoping to incorporate this in some future console models that I'd like to come out with. It's something that could prove useful. And building stuff into a plugin can give you, because you can order things appropriately, it can give you a clearer tone quality. If I'm remembering correctly, there was also something, I think I remember that in Baxendall, I'm using a uh, interleaved biquad filter, and in Baxendall 2, I'm going with a straight biquad. Let's have a quick listen to it. Highs. Lows. So about five and rather difficult setting this. But then people have talked about that many times with the VSTs, and that's because my plugins don't actually do their own settings. So here's the original Baxendall. And here's the upgraded version, version 2. So I think what we've got here is this is still a very decent sounding EQ, but the update to it, simplifying and cleaning it up, it's getting a larger sound to it. And I'll stop those drums. One of the things I'm working on is uh, studio building, and I can't really do new stuff until I have that together, so I am not working at my most efficient these days, but I'm doing the best I can. And I am hoping that as I start getting things together, one of the things I'm getting together is a um, guitar isolation cab. And I feel like that is going to be a sort of silver bullet as far as being able to jump in and start doing studio work and being able to, for instance, live stream it, share it. But until I do that, I'm kind of stuck, and I have to build these things in order to be able to run my studio. And so I'm doing that to the best of my ability. Everything that I'm doing is supported by Patreon. I really appreciate the support on Patreon. Uh, sometimes things are a bit tough, and it means a lot. It means a lot to me. And... Uh, I hope you like uh, the new version of Bax and Aldo. By the way, what you've been hearing, although terrible though it is, is a drum track that I did using a Heritage Audio successor. I'd like to put up a video that shows you all of the different compressors that you can use. Starting with this uh, real Heritage Audio hardware device. And then we've got raw drums. And these are all the different compressor and compressor-like things that you can use on drums. And I'd like to put up a video showing what each of these things sound like. But until they do that, I hope you like uh, Baxendall because Baxendall, rather than being something that you can just watch a video about, is something that you can download and have. 
I do open source software. They can be downloaded off of my website or off of my Mediafire um, backup site. And since it's open source and Patreon supported, you don't have to pay for this stuff. As long as enough people support me, I can continue to do this. And in fact, if you were a developer and you wanted to take the new version of Baxendall, Baxendall 2, and build it into like your DAW or something, all you have to do is credit because it's MIT licensed. You can't ask for more than that. So on that note, I will talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.